Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on an overview of the Power Business Intelligence tools within Excel 2013. I say tutorial, but it's really more of an overview, just giving an introduction to what each of the tools does and how you can use it, before we begin a much longer series of tutorials explaining how to use each in more detail. Here's what we'll cover in this overview or tutorial, depending on how you see it. We'll begin with a look at Power Pivot, showing what it does and how you can use it, and then look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using Power Pivot. We'll then look at Power Query, showing how you can use it to extract, transform and load data within Excel. We'll look at creating Power View reports within Excel, looking at the strengths and weaknesses of them. And finally, we'll have a brief look at Power Map, showing how you can use this to create maps within Excel. So let's get started. We'll begin with Power Pivot. I'm in SQL Server Management Studio and I've got a database called Make a Mammal consisting of 10 tables linked together. And what I want to be able to do is to create a pivot table based on some of the fields in these tables. And to do that, I'm going to go into Excel and open up a file which I've already created, which contains a Power Pivot data model. So previously, I've gone into Power Pivot and what I've done is imported those tables from SQL Server Management Studio and this is what you get. 10 tables linked together, looking very much like they did in the original format. What I can then do is insert a pivot table based on those tables. And you can see in the pivot table field list, all of the tables will show up. And what I can do is pick fields from different tables to create exactly the pivot table I want. So in this case, I'll just show the total quantity of sales for each species across the top and region down the left hand side. But that's not all the Power Pivot can do. And to show this, what I'll do is close down this file and open up a better data model. So in this one, if I do the same thing and go into Power Pivot, you can see that when I imported the tables, I only imported the tables and the fields which I actually needed. And furthermore, I've hidden many of the tables from Client View. Now what this means is that when I create a pivot table, the end user will only see those tables which have been displayed in client view. And so creating the same pivot table as I did earlier is very much easier because I'm not confused and distracted by lots of other fields and columns which I don't understand. So that's a power pivot data model. What it allows you to do is import tables from lots of different data sources, link them together and only show in normal Excel view those tables which the user will find of interest. So what are the advantages of using Power Pivot? I've listed five here. The first advantage is that it's quicker. It uses something called the X Velocity Engine. It used to be called the Vertipack Engine for those who collect names from Microsoft. And it basically is SQL Server and will run a great deal more quickly than Excel will. The second advantage is that you're not limited to the Excel 1,048,576 row limit. You can basically have as many rows as you like in your tables, subject to the amount of memory you've got on your machine. A third advantage is that it's more powerful. You can use a language called DAX to create more complicated calculated fields than available in a standard pivot table. And these are particularly useful when you're doing date functions. So for example, if you want to compare this month's sales with the same period in the previous year, it's very easy to do writing an expression in DAX. A fourth advantage is it makes it easier to combine tables from lots of different data sources into a single pivot table. So if some of your data comes from an Excel CSV file, some comes from the clipboard, some comes from Access, some comes from SQL Server, then you'll find Power Pivot is the ideal tool for you. And finally, a fifth advantage is that it allows you to create a data model, as we've seen, which hides the complexity of the underlying database. So the end user, who probably isn't familiar with databases, only sees those tables or columns which actually make sense to him or her. So those are the advantages of using Power Pivot. Time now to look at the second element of the Power Business Intelligence package within Excel 2013, which is Power Query. I've got an Excel workbook here, and within it, I've created a Power Query. 
What this does is take badly formatted data and tidy it up. It's often called an ETL package, standing for exchange, Extract, Transform and Load. And it's a little baby sister, or baby brother if you like, of SQL Server Integration Services. So here's my data. You can see it's got a number of problems with it. It's actually of the tallest buildings in the world, at least at the time of creating the video. And you can see here that I've got to extract the figures in meters and feet from a couple of columns. What I can do is use all these tools at the top of the screen to create a number of successive transforms. And as I apply each transform that I've created on the right hand side, what you'll see is the data gradually getting tidier. The effect maybe isn't so substantial yet, but as I get near the bottom, you can see it's beginning to look a bit better now. And if I click on the final transform, the cumulative effect of all the different transforms will create some tidy data. And what I can then do is load that into my spreadsheet. Now at the moment that won't work as I've disabled it, so I'll just choose where I'm going to load it to. I can either load it into my Excel worksheet, or I can load it into my underlying Power Pivot data model. I'm actually going to choose my worksheet, and you can see it's brought it in as an Excel table for subsequent use. But the great thing about Power Query is that it will save the query. So if my underlying data changes, all I need to do is rerun my query, and I'll get the latest data in. And Power Query allows you to link not only to lots of different data sources, but also to websites as well. So welcome now to the third part in this series, which is an overview of PowerView. Um, what I'm going to do is show a pre-prepared PowerView workbook. So if I open that up, and you'll notice two things about that. One is it took a long time, and the other is I sighed in the middle of it. And the reason I sighed was PowerView is not a particularly stable package, and I thought I was going to have problems with it again. So that's worth bearing in mind if you're going to be devoting much resources to it. So I've got here a table and a chart. I can see the data update for different age ranges, and that's a typical PowerView report. You can see that it shows up as just another sheet in a workbook, although actually the information is held and presented in a completely different way. So let's close that and have a look at another example. And this time I'll have a look at a map example. So again, it's hopefully going to refresh that view. And this time it's a map. In fact, it's a series of maps. And what it's doing is showing the breakdown of sales for different regions. If I go to this particular southeast region, I can double click. And what it will do is drill down and show me the breakdown of all the towns in the southeast and then I can drill back up again to go back to the original map. So that's how you can create maps in PowerView. Now to see both the strengths and the weaknesses of the package, what I thought we'd do is create a new PowerView based on an existing file. So here's a Power Pivot data model which I created earlier. We've seen this previously in this overview. I think it contains a few tables, and only three of them are visible in Climb View. So what I can now do is go back into Excel, and I can insert a Power View. And the way you do that is to click on the Insert tab, choose Power View, and it will come up with a new blank tab, and I can start to choose which columns I want to display. So let's look at the strengths of Power View. The strengths are undoubtedly that it's so quick to use. As soon as I click on a column in my underlying Power View fields, it will add it into what's called a visualization. <coughs> and you can see that it's immediately given me a table of total quantity of sales by region and species. If I'd rather view that as a chart, I can easily change it, and it immediately updates. So it's very quick when sitting with a client to show them what their data could look like. Now let's look, let's look at the main weakness, which I think is probably formatting. I'll type in a title for my PowerView report, and then I want to format it. The full extent of everything I can do is shown on the text tab. I can change it to underlined I can, and italic. I can change the font size. I can change the justification. What I can't do is change the color or the background or the border or anything else. 
And that's the same for every part of PowerView. So for example, if I wanted to change how this chart looks, I'd search in vain for all the usual Excel chart formatting tools because they just don't exist. To complete our tour of Power BI applications, we'll have a look at Power Map. I've got here a workbook which contains a Power Pivot data model. And I've added into that some calendar information and also some geographical information. It's important I know either the postcode of where transactions took place or the name of the town or some, something which will allow Bing, the mapping application within Power Map, to locate each data point on the map. Having created a data model, which as you'll notice is always the first thing to do for any of the Power BI applications, except perhaps Power Query, I can now create a map. I can do that by clicking the Insert tab, choosing to go to Power Map and launching it. And then what I'll do within Power Map when it loads is to create a new tour. The first thing I'll do is say what I'm mapping by. So I'm going to choose a UK postcode known as a ZIP. Thank you, America. And what I'll then do is say that what I'm going to do is show the total quantity of sales for each map. Now that looks horribly cluttered and will be hard to use. So what I'm quickly going to do is apply something called a filter to say that actually I'll only look at stores for this database where the number of stores is at least 217, which I've just chosen fairly, fairly arbitrarily. Now, this isn't a tutorial, so I just want to give an overview. And I think nothing illustrates how Power Map works better than the time field down here. What I'm going to do is play a video showing the map building up over time. To make it even more interesting, let's make it into a heat map. So when I click on the play tool, what you'll see is a heat map gradually appearing in a rather creepy manner on the map. You can see it's beginning to look like a nuclear power plant after a major incident. And eventually it will finish. And that's typical of what you can do in Power Map. It's quite gimmicky, but it does produce some quite nice effects. But like its sister PowerView, it's not the most stable application I've found. Perhaps just one other thing to mention is that you can create custom maps. And these can be used to create a mapping of who played in which positions on a football field, where people shopped in a department store, or whatever chooses your fancy. And when you create a custom map, you have to fill in a box saying essentially where the contours of the map are. And with that, I think it's time to exit out of Power Map, return to Excel, and that finishes this overview of the features of Power BI. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.